The WOMAN trial is coordinated by the Trials Coordinating Centre at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. The purpose of this training video is to outline the procedures for the trial. Please make sure that everyone involved in the trial in your hospital will have the opportunity to view this video. After viewing, if you still have any questions, please contact the Coordinating Centre. When your hospital is ready to start, you will receive the following materials. Your investigator's study file contains all the forms, information and guidance you need for conducting the trial. The wall posters detail the outline of the trial and the randomization process. Also included are spare copies of the patient information sheets and consent forms translated into the languages of your country. Please use the presentations provided to train your trial team. A GCP training program is available via the collaborator's intranet on the trial website. Initially, you will receive one drug box containing eight treatment packs, entry forms and outcome forms, as well as patient information sheets and consent forms. Each time you receive a drug box, you will need to confirm receipt to the coordinating center. When you start randomizing patients, we will monitor your drug stock every day and will automatically send you new supplies before you've used up all packs. It's very important that you send all the patient entry forms to the coordinating center as soon as possible after randomization, as this is the only way that we will find out when you've used a pack. Remember to list all team members who have responsibilities in the trial on the delegation log. Please let us know if you need any more of the trial materials or if there's anything specific that would make the trial easier for you. General information leaflets for pregnant women are included in your starter pack. Please distribute them to your antenatal clinics and any other clinics where the women in your area go to have their antenatal checks. When postpartum hemorrhage has been diagnosed, the woman should receive all standard treatments for postpartum hemorrhage as per your hospital protocol. The entry form is completed from the patient's hospital notes to assess eligibility. A woman is eligible if she's legally adult, if the clinician has diagnosed postpartum hemorrhage, and if there's no indication or contraindication to tranexamic acid. In some countries, legally adult means 16 years or older, and in other countries, it means 18 years or older. You can see the randomization process on your wall posters and pocket cards. Before assessing the woman, we suggest you take with you the entry form, patient information sheet and consent form from the drug box. If the woman is fully conscious, you can tell her and any relative present about the trial and she should be able to consent for herself. You should give them enough time to make a decision and answer any questions that they may have, bearing in mind the urgency of the situation. In some situations it's not possible for the woman to consent for herself. If there's a relative or friend present, discuss the trial with them and ask if they are willing to consent for the woman to take part in the trial. Remember that you need to give a copy of the signed consent form to the relative and keep a copy for the medical records. The original signed consent form must be filed in the study file. Even if the woman is not well enough to give consent and there's no relative present, you can still enter her into the trial if your ethics committee has given approval to no consent. 
this procedure must be recorded in the woman's medical records. Some women may arrive having given birth and with an established postpartum hemorrhage. Women may also be eligible having delivered by caesarean section. The treatment packs must be used in the strict number order with the lowest available number first. Please use all packs in one box before starting a new box. Before using, please check that the ampules in both dose packs are intact. There are several pre-printed peelable labels in the treatment pack. Write the date of randomization on the labels for entry and outcome forms and attach the labels to the forms. Complete the details on the label post-discharge requirement and attach it to the post-discharge information form. Finally, write the randomization date on the label called medical records cover and attach it to the front of the patient's notes to show that the woman has been included in the trial. All treatments must be prescribed. Dose 1 should be given to all randomised women and administered by intravenous injection at an approximate rate of 1 ml per minute as soon as possible after randomization. To confirm that the treatment has been given, use the labels provided to record this. If bleeding stops, there is no need to give the second dose. The second dose may be given if after 30 minutes bleeding continues, or if it stops and restarts within the 24 hours after the first dose. When the woman is discharged, she should be given a patient card and advised to carry it with her for six weeks. At discharge, death or at 42 days, whichever earlier, the outcome form should be completed from patient notes. If at any time during the six weeks following randomization, the woman is readmitted to hospital, she should show the card so that the principal investigator can be notified. Most untoward medical events which happen in hospital are captured on the outcome form. If you want to report an event not on the outcome form, or if any untoward event occurs after discharge, you'll need to complete an adverse event form. You should identify a person responsible for the data collection and submission. You can enter the data from the entry and outcome forms directly into the trial database. You can also complete electronic entry and outcome forms and either upload them via the collaborator's intranet or send them by email as password protected attachments. As a last resort, forms can also be faxed to the coordinating centre. Guidance on how to complete the forms and how to send the data is included in the study file. For online data entry, each person needs an individual username and password available from the coordinating centre. Please familiarise yourself with the contents of the investigator's study file and pay attention to the guidance sheet in front of the folder. Certain logs need to be kept up to date throughout the trial, such as the delegation log, randomization log and drug accountability log. All patients consented for the trial but not randomised must be recorded on the screening log. All completed entry forms, outcome forms, and adverse event forms and signed consent forms must be filed in the appropriate sections. We will send you new storage files as the trial progresses. All trial documentation needs to be archived at your hospital for at least five years after the end of the trial. There is a secure intranet site for the trial collaborators. Access is by a username and password which are available by emailing woman.data at lshtm.ac.uk.
Via the intranet, you can upload the electronic entry and outcome forms, complete GCP training, and download training presentations. Also, patient information sheets in the languages spoken in your country are available on the intranet. If you need further information about any of the trial procedures, please contact the Trial Coordinating Centre. If you need advice about reporting an adverse event or unblinding a patient, you can call a 24-hour emergency telephone number. Regular updates are available on the trial website www.womantrial.lshtm.ac.uk the success of the trial will be dependent entirely on the collaboration of midwives, nurses and doctors in the participating hospitals and those who hold key responsibility for the trial. The team at the Coordinating Centre are here to help you with any trial related matters and will keep in contact with you throughout the trial with regular updates.